Everyone, think about the first hike you ever went on. Was it tough? Was the trail gorgeous? Did you accidentally venture off the beaten path? Or perhaps it was intentional? Wherever you live, a hiking trail shouldn't be too far away, even if you're living in a city. From breathtaking mountainscapes to thinly carved, winding, white-knuckle trails, where one false move means the end, there's a trail out there for everybody, each one more spectacular than the last. So join me for today's video. I'm gonna count down the 15 most incredible hikes in the world. Number 15, the Jordan Trail. Formally established in 2015, the Jordan Trail is the Middle Eastern country's first and only long distance hiking trail, traversing the length of Jordan from Umqais in the north to Aqaba in the south. This trail was once special because many people from religious texts have passed through these sands, and whether the stories are true or not, they're a testament to how old this land is. The alluring desert landscape, biblical history, ancient ruins, and Bedouin camps extol a sense of timeless antiquity that captivated T.E. Lawrence and Lawrence of Arabia fame in his 1926 book, Seven Pillars of Wisdom. The entire route is an ambitious undertaking, requiring 40 days and covering about 420 miles of trails that pass through 75 hamlets, villages, and towns. Despite first-glance appearances, hikers are pleasantly surprised that the trail is not an endless desert. Throughout the track, expect a diverse landscape that includes the rolling wooded hills of the north, the jagged cliffs rising above the Jordan Rift Valley, the mystic experience of the lost city of Petra, and the dramatic desert sands and soaring mountains in Wadi Rum, and finally, the cool azure waters of the Red Sea at trip's end. The best time to embark on the Jordan Trail hike are March, April, October, and November, when the weather's just right. The most practical way to hike? Well, guided groups or private licensed guides. How about some trip tips? Well, joining a guided group is the most practical way to hike the Jordan Trail, or you can hire a private licensed guard. Those who want to do shorter sections on their own can book lodging in advance through a network of certified accommodation providers. Number 14. Gotemba Trail Japan's Mount Fuji is one of the most popular and recognizable mountains in the world, of course, with its distinctive, graceful, conical symmetry, technically a stratovolcano, forged over millions of years by violent eruptions that have left a scorching sea of volcanic ash and rock along its slopes. The mountain, the highest in Japan at 12,380 feet, is synonymous with the country's physical, cultural, and spiritual identity. Understandably, climbing Mount Fuji is on just about every traveler's bucket list. There are four main routes of differing difficulty, ranging from 4,600 to 7,900 feet of elevation gain to the summit, and most plan for two days on the mountain. Typically, hikers start mid-morning on the first day and climb for six to eight hours to reach pre-booked huts by dusk, then rise after midnight on day two to complete the trek to the summit just before sunrise. Yep, it can get crowded. Despite being loved by the masses, Fuji still ranks as one of the world's most desired hikes. An admirable goal for hikers wanting to experience the summit's see forever views and the resulting sense of achievement alongside scores of others who chant at daybreak. Nearly all climbs are attempted from early July to mid-September, when the weather's mild and the mountain is free of snow. The hike isn't technically difficult, and most people won't need a guide, which undoubtedly eased apprehensions for the 236,000 people who attempted to climb to the summit in 2019. Number 13. The Whale Trail all right, we've all heard a whale of a tail, but how about the whale trail? Well, each year, ideally between June and November, one of nature's most stunning spectacles happens off the southern tip of the African continent. Hundreds of endangered southern right whales breach, breed, and calf close to shore in an event considered among the best land-based whale-watching experiences in the world. Their chosen waters are just offshore of South Africa's De Hoop Reserve, one of the largest marine protected areas on the African continent, and home to the fittingly named 33-mile-long Whale Trail. Another journey best undertaken with a professional guide, this six-day hut-to-hut journey takes every opportunity to witness the coastline's transformation into a critical whale nursery for those magnificent mammals. There are also plenty of natural wonders shoreside as well. The Hoop Reserve is a World Heritage Site and part of the Cape Floral Region, recognized as one of the world's 35 biodiversity hotspots, where 20% of the continent's flora naturally happens. Hikers on this idyllic coastal trek traverse through varied terrain, from some of the most pristine finbos, the fine leaf flowering plants endemic to the region, shrubland to dayglow, orange cliffs overlooking long stretches of blinding white beaches. 
Because this is such a superb aquatic destination, hikers often bring their snorkeling gear and hit the deep tide pools, all teeming with sea life. Number 12. Mount Meru While 19,341-foot Mount Kilimanjaro may get most of the glory in the climbing circles as Africa's highest summit, its little brother, 14,980-foot Mount Meru, reigns as the more approachable mountain for those uh, less obsessed with altitude and more attuned to the African experience. It's often considered a warm-up for Kili. Africa's fourth highest mountain offers a stunning trekking experience in its own right. The dormant stratovolcano is just 43 miles west of Kili and the centerpiece of Tanzania's Arusha National Park, a famed safari location known for the menagerie of giraffe, cape buffalo, zebra, warthogs, monkeys, flamingos, elephants, leopards, and uh, many other African wildlife. Typically, a Mount Meru climb takes about four days, though some last six days and enjoy a slower acclimatizing pace. Unlike Kili, there's only one official route to the summit of Meru, the Momela, which posts an elevation gain of 12,060 feet. Summit views are beyond spectacular. Meru lies on a near 200-mile axis of Africa's most famous national parks, extending from the Serengeti and the Ngorogoro Crater in the west to Kilimanjaro National Park in the east. Climbing between June and February is considered optimum, with December to February being the best months for clear views of Kilimanjaro. Meru hopefuls can try organizing their own summit attempt, but must have a licensed guide, plus a cook and porters. And here's a kicker, the abundance of wildlife on and around Meru's base means an armed ranger will accompanying trekking groups on the first day to ensure they make it safely to the first campsite. The better option is to hand the keys to a tour operator who handles every aspect of the climb. Number 11. Kalalau Trail even those who have never heard of the Nepali coast will likely recognize it. The stunning photogenic grandeur of steep, verdant cliffs, deep and narrow valleys spilling into the sea is known far and wide and on so many screensavers, posters, and travel site bucket lists, making Nepali one of the most recognizable coastlines anywhere. Crowd appeal notwithstanding, though, the 22-mile round-trip Kalalau Trail is one of hiking's ultimate states of nirvana, giving you a tropical island experience nearly unmatched. The 11-mile trail is maintained, but steep as it crosses above towering sea cliffs and through lush tropical valleys festooned with exotic birds and waterfall rivulets. The first two miles of the trail are a popular day hike and provide a sublime snippet of what's to come. But to proceed beyond Hanakapiai Valley, hikers must have an overnight camping permit. When can you go? Well, any time of the year is open season for the hike, as temperatures seldom drop below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, though October to May can bring some unpredictable rain showers. The trail to the spectacular 300-foot Hanakapiai Falls and beyond is recommended for experienced hikers only. Confident backpackers mounting an early start can continue on the rigorous full-day 11-mile hike to the shore, where the crashing Pacific Ocean and two idyllic sand beaches await. Experiencing Hanakapiai and the completely isolated Kalaulau makes this outback trek worth every arduous step. This is an ultimate bucket list endeavor. Number 10. The Waitukubuli National Trail Crossing the self-christened Nature Island of Dominica by foot amounts to a rugged two-week nature hike defined by challenging cliffs, steamy rainforests, countless waterfalls, butterflies, orchids, tropical birds, windswept cliffs, ocean vistas, elfin forests… alright, you get the picture. The aptly nicknamed Caribbean Island stood up to its claim when in 2013, it created the Waitukubuli National Trail, a 114-mile route divided into 14 segments. The pass through coastal villages and up woodland hills into a lush rainforest, past waterfalls down to rivers, up and over the mountains, and then down again to the sea. History is intermingled there as well. As the WNT passes through traditional Kalinago or Carib villages, ruins of the 18th century French settlements are there, and secret maroon passages once used by escaped slaves for running for their lives. Throughout portions of the trek, the smothering rainforests of the mountainous interior give way to small communities and farmlands that yield a cornucopia of exotic island produce. Other sections are rugged and volcanic, with deep chasms, natural hot springs, and Dominica's pièce de résistance, Boiling Lake, a volcanic fumarole in Montois Pitons National Park, bubbling with blue-gray water and surrounded by a vapor cloud. Spring is the best time for hikers to visit since the weather is usually dry and temperatures are still pretty comfortable. You're cleared to do any or all of the segments with the purchase of a 15-day pass, but camping isn't allowed and hikers instead use small lodges and B&Bs. 
There is also the option of hiring a guide-led outfitter who can handle all the logistics for cross-island treks. Number 9. Wales Coast Path The Wales Coast Path is one of the globe's premier walking routes, an 870-mile footpath distinguished as the first and only path to follow a country's entire coastline. While the Herculean effort of walking its entirety has seen a few rugged trekkers, most walk parts of the best sections, the chiseled headlands of the 19-mile Gower Coast and the 186-mile Pembrokeshire Coast Paths in South Wales. So what are some of the sites? Well, there are castles, tons and tons of castles. Wales claims the densest concentration of medieval fortresses in the United Kingdom, with 600 of them dotted across the landscape, all ready to be explored by adventurers and sightseers. Their legacy is a bone of contention in Wales, though, with many of them standing as a stark reminder of an unwanted and unwelcome occupation. But for better or worse, their aesthetic qualities are still undeniable. During the main season from May through September, the sublime landscape is a visual feast of quilted pasturelands grazed by Welsh ponies, rocky Neolithic burial sites protruding from wind-scoured hillsides, and the seals, whales, dolphins, puffins, and seabirds that can be seen at almost any given time. The distance between trailheads is usually not more than a mile or two, so there's always the option to exit and hitch a ride aboard a charismatic Puffin Shuttle, a public bus fleet that transports walkers to local villages and other trailheads. At the day's end, some independent walkers use bushwalking tent camps, but most hire tour operators who help plan daily itineraries and book overnight lodging. While some travelers enjoy flying by the seat of their pants, there's no shame in hiring an expert to help you find things that would have otherwise gone unnoticed. Number 8. Kungsleden Spanning 270 miles in Sweden's far north Lapland province, the King's Trail is superlative for its remote, edge-of-the-world vibe. It's 24-7 midsummer daylight that reboots your circadian rhythm, an August and September aurora borealis that lights up the sky. Hiking this entire trail takes about a month, but because it's broken into sections, you can choose the length of your hike. The most popular section, between Abisko and Nikoluoka, covers 65 miles and takes between 10 to 12 days. This trail is considered one of the world's most famous hikes, coursing through a vast arctic landscape home to rich birch forests filled with flowers, dramatic mountain passes with lunar-like terrain, lush grass, meadows, and broad glacial valleys. When should you go? Well, although walking is relatively easy during the optimum June to September hiking season, the water here is profuse. The well-marked trail has plank walkways and bridges that cross swampy bogs and non-fordable summer streams, though some areas offer rowboat crossings or local charter boats that operate in lakes. Anyone who would rather leave the logistics to the experts can hire local guides who shepherd hikers along and prepared meals at a series of huts operated by the Swedish Tourism Association. The huts are separated by a distance a walker can cover in a day, about 6 to 14 miles, and self-supported backpackers can make advanced hut reservations as well. For a small fee, the more independent tent campers can pitch tents outside the same huts and use cooking and latrine facilities. Number 7. Paria River Hiking the slot canyons of the American Southwest is beyond surreal. Following red rock canyons carved into the riverine labyrinths that include sandy beaches, quiet pools, frothy spillways, and echoing alcoves hemmed in by 200-foot vertical walls can make you think you've entered a matrix-like alter reality. Indeed, one of the premier examples of this bucket list experience is the famed backpacking trek in the Perea River Canyon. There are several entry routes for varying difficulty, but the classic is the 38-miler from White House Trailhead to Lee's Ferry. Footing here can be tricky as hikers repeatedly wade across the river at shallower sections while avoiding quicksand and deeper swirling pools. Yeah, and it goes without saying that hikers attempting the Perea must be weather-wise and understand that distant rainstorms can turn the sunlit canyon into a deadly flash flood within minutes. But the aforementioned highlights make this hike a lifetime experience that you'll be talking about for months and probably even years to come. Like most backpacking trips in the desert, the best time to hike Paria Canyon is in spring and early fall. Hikers average between 8 to 10 miles daily, completing the route in about 4 or 5 days. This is a full-fledged, strenuous backpacking and canyoneering trip rolled into one, and unsuitable for children. Permits are required and know that the application process is pretty competitive and best submitted months in advance, so don't think you can just show up and hit the trail on a whim. Number 6. Coast to Coast Path 
There are other scenic and historical paths in England, but to see the best of the countryside, the Coast to Coast Path gets the full Monty Award. Devised by Alfred Wainwright, the late guidebook author and raconteur created the ultimate English puzzle by piecing together a maddening mosaic of time-worn bridleways, country roads, mountain trails, and obscure public right-of-ways across the private lands that link the hamlets and villages roughly a day's walk apart. Traversing England's narrowest midsection from St. Bees on the Irish Sea to Robin Hood's Bay along the North Sea, the official distance is 182 miles. The C2C gets extra high marks for undulating through three contrasting national parks, the Lake District, the Yorkshire Dells, and the North York Moors. Unlike American parks, British parks are a different breed. There is no vast wilderness. Instead, they adapt to the realities of the English countryside and weave together a landscape that includes small villages, farms, B&Bs, crumbling castles, cow pastures, and wandering sheep. Some hardy souls walk the route independently, carrying their needed provisions. The majority, however, sign on with tour organizers who provide logistical support and book nightly accommodations and do all the heavy lifting by transporting your luggage throughout the journey. For most, the standard 18-day itinerary used by tour operators provides enough time to comfortably cover 8 to 16 miles per day. Just make sure to stretch beforehand. Number 5. Maria Island Tasmania is Australia's smallest state, a sizable island 150 miles south of the mainland and the last stop before Antarctica. The same isolation that attracted British penal colony settlements here has been a blessing for protected lands that for decades were off-limits. As penal colonies were decommissioned, many reverted to protected parks such as Maria Island National Park, considered the crown jewel of the country's park system. Today, the designated World Heritage Site off the East Coast is a hiker's hit for its 36-mile cross-island trek that brims with oddities found only in the Land of Oz. It's like a Noah's Ark for endangered Australian wildlife. The island is teeming with rare forester kangaroos and Bennett's wallabies, as well as other austral oddities like pedemolins, which look like tiny, adorable little kangaroos, furry little wombats, and fairy penguins. The maritime hiking season is best November through March, when austral temperatures hover between 55 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and the sun won't kill you. With the required parks pass needed to visit or camp on Maria Island, explorers on the isolated outpost can also find Robinson Crusoe-style solitude along the island's expansive and pristine paper-white sand beaches. Primitive camping is wide open, or you can opt for a four-day guided walking tour where accompanying guides do the heavy lifting and provide nightly gourmet meals at permanent tent camps. Number 4. Camino de Santiago Spain's Camino de Santiago is having a moment. The pilgrimage that began in the 9th century was nearly lost to history until the past couple of decades, when historians uncovered obscure literature describing the significance of the pilgrimage. Now the Camino is one of Europe's premier through-hikes, growing massively from under 10 certified hikers in 1976 to over 350,000 in 2019. The focus and namesake of the Camino de Santiago is the city of Santiago de Compostela in Spain's far northwest. Legend says that it was here that the martyr St. James is buried, which became a rallying point for Europeans fighting the Moors in the 8th century after a shepherd claimed to have seen a bright light in the skies. While there are many routes to the Camino, the most popular continues to be the nearly 500-mile Camino Francis, or the French Way, which begins at saint jean pied du port in France, and traverses the Pyrenees Mountains with a challenging 4,600-foot ascent, and then heads west across Spain. The trail requires 30 to 35 days and passes through time-worn towns and villages, past farms across valleys and waterways, and through the cities of Pamplona, Bourgois, and Lyon. The Pyrenees can have deep snows in the spring, so hikers doing the French way should plan on beginning the trek in May to June or September to October, avoiding both winter conditions and midsummer heat. Hikers can do the Camino on their own or choose from several guide providers who can accompany them or make lodging arrangements and transport luggage. Number 3. Retacon High Trail Hut to Hut Circuit Straddling the borders between Switzerland, Austria, and Liechtenstein, the limestone precipices of the rugged Retacon form the geological border between eastern and western Alps and stretch from Austria's Montafon Valley as far west as the Rhine River. The majestic mountain range is favored by day and cross-country hikers alike for its jaw-dropping alpine scenery and accessible trails that mere mortals can do with the proper preparation. 
With its vaulting peaks at 9,700 feet and sloping green pasture lands populated by goats and cows, Retikon could be a stand-in for the famous Sound of Music scenes. Hikers can experience a slice of this alpine fantasy with non-technical Class 1 climbing on a number of five-day hut-to-hut hikes offered by several mountain tour operators. The guide-led Retikon High Trail Circuit is hands down a classic that begins above Lunarsee, one of Austria's most spectacular lakes, and then continues into Switzerland and even circles back to Lunarsee. Daily hikes range from 6 to 10 miles, with a total trip length of about 28 miles and 12,000 feet climbed. While days can be pleasantly exhausting, nights are often filled with communal revelries with other hikers eager to swap stories and toast the day's accomplishments. Number 2. Diente Circuit Trek Mention Patagonia and images of the toothy three towers of Pain and Torres del Paine National Park come to mind, with the Torres del Paine Circuit being one of the world's most sought hiking circuits. But roughly 560 miles southeast is a lesser-known circuit every bit as worthy of a hiker's obsession as its northern flagship sibling. The Diente Circuit Trek, or Teeth of Navarino, is the southernmost trek in the world, a 23-mile circuit in the Chilean Patagonia, just 60 miles from the tip of South America, and by all accounts, one of the world's most remote treks. It was established in the early 1990s and receives fewer than 100 trekkers per year, partly due to its isolation. The staging point is Puerto Williams, a remote home to about 2,000 residents connected to the outside world by six prop flights a week. Naturally, there's no shortage of Patagonian splendor, like the famed Torres del Paine. The spiky dientes rise from the sea and reach almost 4,000 feet at the Dientes de Navarino Massif. But unlike trekking in popular Torres del Paine, the dientes offers an unadulterated man-on-the-moon experience that's almost unheard of these days, and any group of trekkers will likely be the only ones on the circuit. Sometimes it pays to go off the beaten path and avoid fellow tourists, but like so many others on today's list, tackling Diente Circuit isn't feasible year-round, so December through early April is the ideal window to embark on such a trek. Independent hikers can take a crack at the six-day circuit, but the logistics of getting to the remote staging area means most hikers will want the logistics and experience provided by a guiding outfitter. Number 1. The Great Ocean Walk Located 124 miles southwest of Melbourne, where the Australian coast meets the wild southern ocean, the Great Ocean Walk obliges hikers with plenty of only in Australia sights and ranks as the continent's most superlative coastal footpath. Beginning at Apollo Bay, the 68-mile walk shadows the iconic Great Ocean Road, passes through the Great Otway and Port Campbell National Parks, and concludes with an encore at the world-famous limestone stacks known as the Twelve Apostles. Along the route, hikers will undoubtedly encounter koalas resting in eucalyptus treetops, wallabies scampering along the headlands, creek and river crossings, tall forests, and deserted beaches with panoramic views from windswept headlands. When should you go? Well, the austral spring, autumn, and summer are the preferred times to explore this trail, but the June through September winter season also has its incentives in the form of cool temperatures, wet, lush rainforests, and being the best time to spot migrating humpback and southern right whales passing just offshore. The Great Ocean Walk can be done independently over eight days, and walkers can stay at various dedicated campsites or find off-walk accommodations nearby. But if hoofing it on your own isn't quite for you, then the Great Ocean Walk tour operators will handle the logistics and lodging for those who lean towards a more organized experience, and they'll do all the thinking for you so you can put all of your energy into that long hike ahead. I'll see you next time. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.